Can you hear me? Hello? No, if anyone's in here. All right, so I don't, I have two microphones up here. I don't know which one. Does it sound like it's coming from this one? Yeah, but is it this one? Or is it this one? Well, I'm just going to leave them both up because I don't know what I set the audio to. The first one. All right, cool, cool. Well, I'm not going to unplug anything because I might I might mess it up. Um, do you know if you can swear on live stream? Will that will that will that kick me out or what? Ah, crap. You know what? I may have put a delay by accident on the messages. Anyway, I'll just get started. So um, my name's Nate. Thank you for joining my live stream. Um, if you don't know, um, the whole reason I'm live streaming is because I've actually been slacking on some of my videos, but I've had a lot of trouble with my cameras. Um, I was out of game and my SD cards corrupted and I just haven't been able to like edit anything. And my mom's actually moving out of state. So I'm at her place watching the dogs. Uh, this is one of the dogs here, Luna. I do have some treats for them. Here. Good girl. Anyway, Let's see if anyone. All right, cool. So I'm going to be assembling a Wolverine Bolt VSR10 HPA. Penny, come here. If I get up, I'm sorry. Sometimes they'll bark at stuff here. Good girl. But I have um, some energy drinks here. Someone had mentioned those would be a cool thing to have. I have these ghost ones. They're actually pretty good. Um, I'm going to open one now because I'm really thirsty. This one is Tropical Mango. Hope I don't spill it on anything. All right, so. Uh, I have like a low-end peasant channel, so I don't have any cue cards. So I actually have this notebook here I'll be looking at. It's actually a kitten notebook. Are there any questions before I get started? Wolverine Bolt versus... So, an HPA, like this is the bolt here. Um, I'll start by talking about you have the electronic Wolverine Bolt and you have the Bolt M, which is the manual one. I stand by the electronic one. I do not like the Bolt M or the Mancraft. And the reason being is when I first HPA'd one of my VSR 10s, the whole point was to not have trigger sears. And if you use the Bolt M or the Mancraft, you still have the sear. So I think it kind of defeats the purpose of HPAing the gun. You still, you're essentially taking your spring sniper rifle and you hook an airline up to it. You still have the sears. I think they're still 45 and 90 degree. Now you do have a small battery with the e-bolt but that's that's really no big deal at all if you've ever run an hpa gun the battery is really small and it's not like an aeg where it can die the same day you know you charge it i actually think amped airsoft when the bolt first came out they had a a battery they fully charged it and it took like six months to die and i've even had my friend he left his in his truck for almost a year and hot days and cold days and it was fine What's your opinion on the SRS? The SRS is uh, like the most solid gun I've ever used in terms of an airsoft sniper rifle. Uh, I have it as a, a backup. If anything ever happens to my guns, which they do all the time, I use my SRS and it never lets me down. Someone told me before I stream to make sure that I say that all this is airsoft. None of this is a real firearm. <laughs> I know that I think it was uh, US Airsoft got his channel. He was live streaming and it shut down. So I just want to say all this stuff is airsoft all 
Okay, so I would like to thank Victor. He actually sent me this gun, and he bought the Wolverine bolt and all the parts, and he sent it to me so I could uh, build it for him. And I figured it'd be a good idea to just attempt to do it on live stream. So I do expect something to go wrong. Hopefully it doesn't. So fingers crossed, but I have all the parts here. And I'm going to try and put it together. And hopefully at the end it all works, if anyone's still hanging with me. So this is just uh, your receiver. There's many out there. You have, this is Tokyo Marui, which is a good spec to, to build off of. You have JG. There's Action Army, Maple Leaf, Airsoft Pro, PDI. Some of the PDI parts are, I think they're overkill in price, but there's really nothing wrong with this receiver. Um, when you go HPA, especially the electronic bolt, there's really no, you don't have to worry about having things super solid because everything works a lot smoother and easier and there's not as much tension on it. So this is actually a two-piece receiver, which again is fine. It's just the, the tail end of it is held in by the real rear scope rail screw. Now I did do a couple things before I got all this ready because I don't exactly, I'm not gonna try and drill something uh, on live stream. I don't wanna make a mess on the carpet with shavings, but you do have to drill a hole for the air fitting in the receiver. Now, if you look at the bottom of your receiver, you can drill the hole anywhere between the front trigger box screw, uh, screw hole and the body bolt. I like to drill it right behind the, the body screw hole because the pull will be the shortest. And technically, I believe when you have the fitting there, the nozzle sitting far into the engine. So I think you can actually save a little bit of air. I don't know how good my computer camera is, but it looks like there's glare. Well, if you have a receiver, you just, it's, I like to drill it behind the threaded hole for the, the body screw. Some receivers also have a, a gaping hole in it like there's a hole straight through, you're going to have to drill around that because the when you drill the hole for the fitting, I have the fitting here, um, you want it to be as snug as possible because that actually is one thing that keeps the bolt on the cylinder pretty sturdy. i got to check if anyone asks any questions. I don't see anything new. Okay, so we'll get started. So... I'm going to take the cylinder he has. I believe this is an Angel Customs Teflon cylinder. You have to be careful before you get started that the bolt that comes with the kit, you need to see if it threads in. So the one that came with this was, it, there's a VSR or a bar. Those are the only two nozzles I know of for a bolt on Wolverine Airsoft. But he, his had the VSR, which is Marui spec, and this one is bar, which is bar spec. A lot of aftermarket cylinders I noticed take the bar 10 nozzle. So just check that before you get started. If you don't have the right one, you can just order it from Wolverine. Another thing that I noticed was the fitting. You want to make sure that the fitting... <laughs> Hi, Penny. You want to make sure that the, the fitting can slide through the slot all the way to and front, like all the way from the back to the front because the front is usually where it sits. And when I was putting this together, it was actually tight and I couldn't rack it. So I had to file it a little bit. That was something new that I learned. But you're going to take your bolt. Um, you can make sure it's tight. It just has to be hand tight, the cap and the body. And I like to fold or plug the harness in. And I fold the harness and try and crimp the wires a little bit because you have to put the wires in. And you have to be able to pull the wires through the cylinder and through the receiver. But uh, first look at the hole where the fitting goes, and you want to try and keep this up. It's a bit tricky to keep everything aligned. So I have the, the fitting hole going through the, the slot in the cylinder here. It's lined up with it. And then you want to slide it in, and you want to see the hole of the bolt, the threaded hole for the fitting through the hole that you drilled in the receiver. Which it might take me a little bit to get this lined up here. Okay, so I see it. So once you have it, I have the bolt in, the threaded hole facing up through the slot in the cylinder and through the hole in the receiver. Penny's kind of pushing me forward here. So I'm gonna take my fitting and try and thread it in here. 
And I noticed that Wolverine started putting some type of sealant. It looks like red Loctite. Something on this fitting. I used to put blue, a dab of blue Loctite on it, but it seems like the fittings come with something on it already. Now you want to make sure this fitting is tight, but don't, you don't want to break it off in the engine. So I'm just going to take some pliers here and just snug it up. Now this next part's kind of tricky here. I always run into some issues with it. Uh, you have to get the harness also. You have to get that from inside the cylinder and receiver. So you can use a flathead or some needle nose. Does anyone have any questions while I try and fish this out of here? Penny, you stole my seat. Here, look out. Move up here. Go up here. Okay. gaping the hole oh yeah the um another option for a receiver is the boltrig one piece thank you thank you jake that is a receiver that the receiver and outer barrel are one piece and everything is true and straight and sometimes when you put the the gun together and you tighten the bolts it will pull everything down and then your cylinder won't have a smooth bolt pull but yes a boltrig one piece receiver is also a very good option let me make sure I covered everything here. Oh, another thing when you dr when you drill the fitting hole close to the front uh, threaded hole for the body bolt, you're probably going to have to Dremel the stock a little bit because the airline might hit the there's like a a molded piece in the stock for the bolt, and you can just kind of Dremel that away. You you can fix anything with the Dremel, honestly. Just about anything. Maybe not a marriage, but if anyone knows any tricks to getting this out better, feel free to let me know because I usually always have trouble getting this out of here. And you want to be careful because if you grip the connector the wrong way, you might go ripping the wires out of it. Oh, I almost had it. There we go. Okay, so... You got the bolt in the cylinder. The fitting is snug, keeping everything together so the cylinder can only go so far. And then I have the harness pulled out. Now that everything moves around the bolt, the bolt and the receiver are essentially bolted together and then the cylinder moves around it and the harness. Um, I do have an Instagram. It's blind underscore sniper. If you ever want to see any of these pictures close up, like better resolution, like where to drill the hole, you can just uh, DM me and I'll send them to you. I'll actually, let me put my Instagram in the chat right now. That is <laughs> PP Poo Poo Squad. What's up, Dan? I put my Instagram up there if anyone wants to follow me or I can send pictures later tonight. So, got the bolt in the cylinder. Oh, I did forget to put uh, a little bit of Tech T. Uh, you can put Tech T around the bolt, but this one actually didn't really have any issues. If it's like a little snug, there's like guide rings on it. But this one was really smooth, so I also forgot. But uh, Tech T is what I use to lube the bolt in the cylinder, but mainly the cylinder and the guide sleeve, which I'll do later. Now, there's one thing that I really wish Wolverine would include. They include a, they, they give you airline, but the airline is, is part of the fitting that threads into here. So I actually found fittings on eBay. Um, I'll have to put the link in the description, or if you DM me, I can send it to you. But every time I put together an HPA VSR 10, I put in one of these fittings. It threads into the bolt fitting. And it has a QD push uh, push lock for the line. So like here's some airline. It can just push in to the fitting. And then you can just, if you ever take your gun apart, it will just push right out. Let me snug that up before I forget. So you make sure your fitting is snug into the bolt. And then you put the other fitting in. And you tighten that up as well. Now, this is another thing you can put. You should put some type of uh, blue Loctite or thread locker on it just a tiny bit. But these fittings uh, have an O-ring at the base, so it actually does help seal. Okay, before I break it, that should be tight enough. Yeah, um, 
the the micro line that comes with there's no reason why it should break but over time since i have to constantly take my guns apart because i'm ocd i have had them leak and also too they aim straight down and they kink and it, it all comes down to how much you take your gun apart and if you snag the line on anything but i really like these uh push to connect fittings i think it's a, a value add to, for the hpa wolverine bolt what's next here Got the harness out, special air fitting. Uh, so another thing I like to do is add a spring. So we're, we're good to put the nozzle on now. And you just put a, sh a short spring. This is probably like an inch long. Not a lot of tension at all. I found some on Amazon or my local hardware store. But you're going to put the spring in the cylinder. And then you can put your nozzle on. But the spring, when it's all to, all together and the barrel, the hop-up chamber is pushing back on it, it can return on its own. Now, it's not really necessary if you run a bolt handle because when you, it's it's super easy to return the, the bolt on the e-bolt, the electronic bolt. It's it's effortless. That's another, another benefit of going HPA. I don't know too much about the Bolt M. I've heard some people had like a rough bolt pull, but with the electronic bolt, there, it's it's just like this. This is all you have to pull. But the spring will allow it to return itself back into the hop chamber. And then you can also do the straight pull where you just leave the bolt handle locked up. Or you can do all types of different handles. I use fluted charging handles. And then it's just one less step for faster follow-up shots. But I always put that spring in there. And then you can use needle nose to tighten the nozzle. I have this bougie speed VSR cylinder head tool. So since I spent too much money on it, I'm just going to go ahead and use it. I was going to make sure that the cylinder head is tight here. You could, I don't really think it's necessary to put Loctite or Teflon on this. I have had a cylinder head come loose, but it was my own fault because I had a really, really tall spring in here. And I think the pressure, or it didn't make the cylinder head come, come loose. It actually started to thread the HPA engine apart. So just make sure that if you put a spring in, it's like a really weak spring. Let's see if there's any new questions. Most millstones are like 2.8. Well, yeah, actually, I was surprised. I went to a, an op at Robin Hood Paintball in Maryland, and their their jewel limit was 2.89. And a millstone I'm going to at the end of the month, it's only 2.8. I think I want to say a typical walk on day around me, the the jewels are 2.3 and I noticed, excuse me, a lot of fields are starting to chrono with a, a three, two, which I think is really smart. So I think next up would be the trigger box, which is another thing that I did prior to this video is I mounted the switch. So you take your trigger box, like if you have a stock bar 10, Stock Tokyo Marubi SR10, and you're going to take the four screws out of the trigger box and essentially remove everything. The only thing you keep is the trigger blade, uh, the pin, if it has a separate one that holds it in place, and the spring that lets the trigger like return on its own. That's all you need. Everything else in the trigger box comes out. You know, no more sears, none of that. No spring guide stopper, it's all gone. Then what you do is Wolverine includes the drill bit. It comes in a little baggie and you drill holes in the trigger box. And they also include the screws, which is another thing that's kind of uh, a bit tricky. Every time I've ordered a Wolverine bolt new, the screws that come in it, they are a, a T6 Torx. Now I have this, it's a pretty expensive bit set here. I don't know if you can see it, but I, I don't even know how much it was. It's, it's by Mac tools. It was way too much money, but Every, a couple basic uh, torque sets I've seen, they, they don't even go down to this small. Like this is the smallest torques in this set. And that's what the screws are. And I've gone to the hardware store and gotten other screws. But if you get the bolt kit new and you want to use their screws, you're going to have to get a T6 Torx bit. But all you do is you, the trigger has like a square that sticks up and you just hold the trigger switch in place. So the little orange button, let's see if you can see a little orange button on there. I don't know if your screen looks like mine, but you just want that right against the, the block. So when you, let's see if you can hear it. It makes a clicking sound. But you hold the switch so it's right against the trigger. 
and you want to hold it real still and you just kind of mark it with something and you a lot of people only run one screw and it's best to just start with one you drill it uh, put the self tapper screw in and then you can pivot the trigger box in case you drilled the hole in the wrong spot but if you drill the second hole in the wrong spot you're kind of screwed you're going to have to like flip the switch or mount or whatever it's not that hard i i mess them up all the time and you're able to flip it and save it but once you have both screws i recommend both screws if you only use one i would put like a dab of super glue under the switch because if you only run one or if the glue or whatever breaks loose in time you can actually pivot the switch off and then when you pull the trigger it won't work a lot of people don't really like having an electronic switch that's why a lot of people don't like the e-bolt is there anyone that used the e-bolt and likes the bolt m better if you have say something because i i don't know i just i'm not a fan of the bolt m i like the e-bolt but yeah once you get the trigger switch mounted you can just bolt the trigger back up to your receiver and i route the one part of the harness down through the trigger box and then it just plugs into the piece that you pulled out of the bottom of the receiver that goes into the bolt. There's enough room in the trigger box since it's gutted to put the connector and the wiring. Hope I'm doing some good angles here that you guys can actually see what I'm doing. But yeah, you can you you can easily get the trigger box flush with the receiver. Actually, let me see if I turn this light on here. Maybe that will be a little better. Whoops. Let me find my trigger box screws here. Again, just to clarify, this is an airsoft replica. It is not a real, real firearm. If you do build a VSR from scratch, make sure when you get hardware, because sometimes when I build one from nothing, I have to buy everything down to the individual screw. And if you get screws that are too long for the trigger box or the scope rail, you can actually, it will make contact with the receiver and it will, or um, not receiver, the cylinder, and it will scratch your cylinder up or make it so you can't rack it. Long live the jewel creep. Again, thanks to Victor for sending me his gun and all of these parts, his airsoft gun. Pretty simple. So now we have bolt, cylinder, nice Teflon cylinder, receiver, have the scope rail already, trigger box, got the harness here. And then I think now we'll start with the, the barrel group stuff. Yeah, so we're going to start with the hop-up chamber, which he also wanted to do one of the Masada hop-up arms, which Masada is a guy that I found on the Airsoft Sniper Forum. It's a good place to read a lot of info. That's actually where I learned a lot of things to mess with all this stuff. And when you get the Action Army hop-up chamber, I don't think anything is really better than this hop-up chamber-wise. There's a lot of new ones that come out, but this... Overall, this is just like the best chamber at the end of the day. But you you put a nub in the hop arm, and a lot of people say that you want to eliminate movement and play, and usually that's true. So the Masada hop arm, the nub is built into the arm, and he 3D prints them. And it's he's the ones he sent me, I, I think it's a pretty good plastic. I don't have much experience with 3D printing, but some people... 3d print things and it looks like cornmeal and buffalo shit this actually looks really nice uh, if you obviously you're not all going to have a tridose tool but the tridose tool or tridose i don't know how you say it uh clips into the action army hop-up chamber and you need to press the pin out to swap the hop arms so i'm gonna see if i have everything here to do that i don't know if i have Oh, I had everything. Oh, yeah, I have it right here. Remember, every, anything works as a hammer. 
if you don't have this, if you're putting uh, the Masada hop arm in your action army chamber and you don't have the Tridos Tritos 3D print tool thing, you can get something called a bench block, which is, it's like a, it looks like a hockey puck, but it's got all types of cuts in it and cutouts and divots and you can like prop stuff up on it. But I use that for my chamber before I had one of these and you just prop it up a certain way so you can hammer this pin out here. started no, i'm in a mess i don't even know where my oh here they are take the pin the rest of the way out so i'm taking out the stock action army arm that takes nubs and i am dropping in the masada hop arm which is a pretty good upgrade i think there's mo like i haven't seen any negative things about it i use it in a few of my guns and it works great a few of my airsoft guns and I just read good things about all over the forums. And thanks again to Masada because he sent me, I have them here somewhere. He sent me a, a baggie of them. He actually, he actually makes them for the, the Tridos TDC as well. So if you want one of them, I have a couple left. You can just send me a DM on Instagram. And then I dropped the pin here. I have no idea. There it is. So are there any questions while I put this pin in here? Oh, hey, what's up, Malcolm? Uh, yeah, check out my friend Malcolm over at Vroom Productions. He's the one I usually team up with. He, uh, I've traveled out to him. It was like a brutal 10-hour drive, and then he actually came out to me and was smart enough to fly out. But yeah, we usually team up, and he's like one of the only other YouTubers that I've teamed up with in person. But go check his channel out when you have a second. Freaking arm. I thought about doing this before the live stream because it was going to kick my butt. And I should have, but here I am trying to put it in place. Because I, I there's a couple things with the fitment I want to show you. Um, so once it's back in, you can kind of use needle nose to push it almost flush. But I like to still try and somehow you can't really prop it back up on the tool i'm just gonna use the needle nose but you want to make sure that the pin's all the way back in all right so i have it pretty far in there now one thing that i did notice it all depends because there's so many different like generations and uh what's our batches of action army hop-up chambers that not every single printed arm is going to fit perfectly in every single chamber. Now, you want it to be snug. Like the Action Army hop arm would just, when you were holding it, it would just fall straight out. This one is like snug and the side to side play is gone and that's what you want. But I noticed that with some of them, they need a little bit of filing. So I kind of just fine tune it to the window. So I do have a, a file set here. I file the crap out of anything I need to. And this one looks like it hits. It won't go down in the front. So I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to file this a little bit if anyone has any questions. But you just need to file it so the arm goes all the way down into the window. Because it has to it has to press on the bucking, obviously. But if you don't, you, you may be able to get it to go down into the window. But it's going to be a real tight fit. And then it might not, the hop might not back off. And then, it's like I said, it's it's hit or miss. I've had ones that drop right in and... It's a 3D print, a 3D printed part, so I'm sure not everything is perfect. Does anyone on here 3D print? The TAC, uh, what are your thoughts on the TAC-41? The TAC-41, I think it's just, to, in my opinion, it's an, an SRS that's not a bullpup. It's, it's the Airsoft Sniper Rifle with a big volume. I've never used one. There was so much hype for them. I just, like wasted so much money on other airsoft stuff that i i was like i'm not even gonna get into the tac 41 but I, I think it's a good gun i think if you like the performance of the srs and you don't really like the whole bullpup thing i think a tac 41 might be a good airsoft replica to have is jewel creep taking advantage of where you game not really Usually where, where I go play, um, there's, a, there's a lot of HPA guys. And 
the HPA players that have like pretty upgraded guns, they already run at least three twos, which is what they chrono with. So there's not much. How do I word this? I don't think there's a lot of jewel creep intentionally because there are people that build the specific guns. I don't know. You have like weighted pistons, short barrels. I don't think anyone around me does that on purpose. There are definitely a lot of HPA players though. So there is, there's definitely jewel creep. I know with uh, the right engine and dwell settings, you can really get some good creep, but I was actually messing with, I have a spring VSR with the edgy SAP and I'm tuning it for a mil sim and I have, the piston at at least at 100 gram. I was talking to uh, Jake that was in the chat earlier, trying to figure out what weights to run. And I don't even think it had that much creep. So I also think that to have a, a purpose-built jewel creep gun, there's a, there's a lot of variables that you have to, to get set. And I've tried, but I just, I couldn't get any miraculous numbers aside from just dropping in a, a 4.8 gram and it being more jewels like normal. We chrono two O's and game at three sixes. Big yeah. Oh yeah. I can't I can't get over that field still to this day. Chrono with two O's. I I've said this before um, on the forums and maybe even my Instagram. If uh or it was Facebook. If a field if a field chronos with two O's, that's I think that's on them. That's their own fault. If you're gonna chrono with a two O and then wonder why guns shoot high jewels when they drop in, you know, four eights for sniping or, or three sixes with HPA. Like that's, that's on them. I'm not going to say any names, but there's a, there's a one, one field near me that we refer to as the lawless wasteland field. And uh, there were, there was like four times I went there and every single time I went there uh, trying to chrono my gun was different. My airsoft gun. One time I went there and they chrono with two O's. No big deal. They put the BBs in, chronoed it. Uh, the next time I went there, one of the ref, the young ref kids stopped me and said, oh, hey, is that a sniper rifle? And I said, yeah. And he goes, oh, you don't have to chrono that. And I was like, well, why? So that, why would you not chrono one of the airsoft replicas that shoots hot, like higher than the rest? Uh, then they, they started switching to three twos. And then I forget what the other thing was. Oh, uh, they they didn't, whoever the, the person croning was, they didn't know how to read their chart, and it also didn't go up to 4.8 grams. So it's some fields, man. It's just, it's just bad. Okay. So I have this arm filed. I'm just going to make sure that the shape of it is even. But now the, if you can see, the arm will, it would usually stop here, but now can actually go in and there's no resistance and it's just nice and snug in there showing instant replay in slow motion epic anyway i can move on now so when you get when you use the masada arm you also don't use the spring anymore there's a a cutout in the stock arm and are you okay here want a treat good girl the the stock action army has a little cutout for a spring and it like keeps tension up on the arm. But honestly, I don't even know if that's really needed with the stock arm and with the Masada arm, there's not even a cutout there. And I think just the, the pressure of the bucking and it being such a, a snug fit, you just don't need the spring anymore. Ireland one jewel. Limit. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I get, yeah, you have a little creep. I can't imagine. Do you in Ireland, do you, um, do you snipe with one jewel? Because I feel like, what weight would you even use for that? I think four eights would be too heavy. So after the Masada arm here. Okay. We are going to get the inner barrel. So I, I could say so much about inner barrels. I think that, this is my opinion, inner barrels are the most over-marketed part in Airsoft. I think that you can achieve the world with a stock inner barrel in most cases. I'm not saying that there aren't crappy ones out there or crappy inner surface finishes, but I think there are so many barrels out there, like the Maple Leaf Crazy Jet and the way that that porting is. I was just talking uh, on Facebook because Edgy makes a ported one too. And even though Edgy is good barrels, I don't really think anything is proven with ported barrels, but you have 
I think aluminum barrels are pretty crappy, but they are nice because if you're going for every ounce of weight, they're like, it feels like you're holding nothing in your hand with an aluminum barrel. But anyway, for an inner barrel, it really just needs to be straight, have a good inner surface finish, and it needs to be stabilized. That's that's all you really need from your inner barrel. I stand by Edgy mainly because the surface finish on his are, are top tier. Now you get to a microscopic level where I don't even think it matters anymore for when the BB is like going through the barrel because there's also theories like when you shoot the BB through the barrel, does it ride the top? Does it stay in the center and air cushions it? That's a whole nother thing. But Edgy's barrels, because the surface finish is so good, not I don't think it necessarily makes them perform better for the BBs, which it may be true, but I never clean my barrels. I can't tell you when the last time was I ran a cleaning rod through, and it's because the surface finish on an edgy is is lap like beyond belief that this nothing can stick to it. Like it just doesn't get dirty. But I I like edgy and PDI. Um, I have a couple other ones here. I was going to show you. Uh, this actually. Um, Someone on Instagram for us just snagged this from me. Uh, my friend was going to build a gun and he he actually got into cars, so he's getting out of airsoft, so we're parting his gun out. But this is a brass edgy barrel. It's actually a 6.0 bore, which is pretty tight, pretty tight bore. They make a, a 5.98 too, but that's that's kind of pushing it. But the tighter the bore, the more efficient your your airsoft replica will be because there's less space around the BB. So the air stays behind the BB and I think less gets around it. You can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not, I'm no scientist, but anyway, uh, this is also a edgy bull barrel and it steps up in the middle. So it's 10 millimeter outer diameter, which again, I think you can see little to no improvement. It's, it's one of those things where you'll see, you might see an improvement in accuracy and consistency because I think the theory behind it is, the barrel's thicker, so even though you should always run a barrel spacer, it might um, dampen the vibrations more. And then you also have all kinds of things with a uh, spring airsoft rifle, like cylinder to barrel ratio. But I'll save that for uh, another discussion because this is all HPA. But edgy barrels, um, I think they're the best out there. Um, even if they don't actually improve the performance, it makes you have to clean it less. And I'm big on that because I'm pretty lazy. PDI is not aluminum. Uh, no, I don't. PDI makes stainless steel barrels. I was saying that um, like edgy stainless barrels, this is a stainless barrel. And I don't even know. I think Mad Bull makes an aluminum barrel. I was just saying I don't really like aluminum because I think that they gunk up a little easier. I mean, maybe you can, uh, uh, what's the word, lap them and get a really good surface finish. Uh, there's something about aluminum. I, I also think if you drop the barrel or i don't know i don't know how you'd bend it but an aluminum barrel would bend really easily and i only see aluminum barrels in like ultra cheap guns but i haven't taken too many airsoft rifles apart other than uh like vsr clones and whatnot then i do have silicone sword or precision pursuits on instagram he sent me a few barrels and he makes these like ultra thick barrels and they're actually designed to uh, eliminate the black Action Army uh, barrel guide sleeve. He he he's really good on the lathe, and he machines them. So it's just one of those things, like I said earlier, less moving parts and and different tolerances. But the theory behind it is the barrel is extra thick, and you're eliminating one of the extra moving parts, and it could potentially give you better consistency. Um, I haven't actually put one to like extensive testing. My test is if I put the gun together and everything is installed correctly to the best of my knowledge and I go to the field and I can actually get some hits on the enemy team, then I'm, I'm pretty content with everything. But if you want one of his super thick boy barrels, um, I put his Instagram down in the description. And if you DM me, I can also send it to you. But he makes these barrels. I actually have an aluminum barrel in here. I think this is aluminum. This is a modify, yeah. Yeah, I actually think so aluminum won't be magnetic. Oh, that one isn't either. Anyway, does anyone have any other comments on barrels? 
You can't lap an anodized aluminum barrel. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. There, there he is. Silicone sword. I did not know that. Lengths do make performance differences. I've noticed. Um, I, I, I don't think that a longer or shor shorter barrel will give you a performance increase in terms of accuracy and consistency. Now that's within a certain window. I don't think for an airsoft sniper rifle, you should go below 250, 250 millimeter. And I don't think you should go above 550, but that's, that's for a VSR 10. And I would even say with HPA, but mainly for spring, I think if you go too short of a barrel or too long, you experience certain things like, uh, I don't know, uh, silicone sore. Can you touch on that? Uh, having a barrel too short. I think one of the terms is called BB suck. And if you have a barrel too long, you almost like all the volume in the cylinder can't quite power the BB. So it, I don't know. I've never, I ran a 550, 550 millimeter barrel once an HPA rifle. And it could, it could have been my hop up bucking. It could have been the arm or nub I had, but I, I thought that it wasn't really that consistent. There's so many variables and I just had that one bad experience and was like, oh, I'm going to stick to a shorter barrel. I think that. I, I like G-Spec lengths the best, which, which is 300 millimeter, because I am happy with the consistency I get from my rifles. And you can have a, a short sniper rifle with a suppressor, and it's not like 400 feet long. Because if you take just the, the, the barrel that's going into this rifle, for example, it's uh, 430 millimeter. Um, you put a suppressor on, it's quite long. But uh, I'm going to try and stay on track here because I started rambling on. Sorry about that. So the next thing is the bucking i think that maple leaf buckings are the best for vsr 10s if you choose to do bucking and not r hop which is that's another huge debate the 2021 what is this 2021 autobot uh silicone bucking i i run these in almost all of my rifle airsoft replicas that have um a bucking and not r hop and 60 or 70 degree, I think, are the best. That's This is, again, this is all based off of things I've read on the forums. I actually think that Navrich read the forums, and he put one of the most sought-after buckings in the SSG-10. But anyway, this one is a 70 degree. Um, I think some people say, I could be wrong, not to run the metal ring in an Action Army hop-up chamber. Um, I, I don't know if that's right, but I, I always put it in because there's a groove in the bucking for the clip to sit like down in so it does fit no new questions so 2021 autobot let's put it over the barrel window make sure it it's center I, I do like these because they're clear so you can see like you could you could have all the grooves lined up but the buckings kind of shifted but you want to make sure that the contact patch is centered over the window I also hear that you don't need Teflon tape with an Action Army chamber. I do it for peace of mind. But yeah, Action Army hop-up chamber has an excellent air seal. You shouldn't ever really need Teflon. But in a stock two-piece chamber, which uh, I don't even think anyone runs those anymore. It's 2022 like it was program. But um, a little piece of Teflon. I started over, over where the bucking is over the barrel or meets the barrel. I'll try and put it up to the camera, but when you're wrapping the Teflon, you're wrapping it over the bucking and the barrel, but you want to have a little bit on the bucking. So I try not to go over the contact patch and then you want to just wrap it tightly and then slowly shift it. So then you're wrapping it. I wrap it over the barrel because it makes putting the guide piece on easier. So then you're going to take your um, black action army guide sleeve piece. If you have an edgy bull barrel, barrel, you need to remember to put this piece over first because it steps up. I always forget, so luckily this is a standard diameter barrel. And then with the Teflon tape, uh, you can put like Tech-T on it or something, but um, I usually just twist it into place. And I just twist and push, and it kind of seals over the Teflon, and it's a nice snug fit. Now, there are two holes in the sides of this sleeve that have to line up with the set screws in the Action Army hop-up chamber. And you want to make sure that they're at the right spot. So one of the holes should be lined up. There's a little groove. Uh, you can see the Teflon that's sticking up there. But that's all that's over the bucking. And I didn't go over the contact patch. 
but I always align one of the holes with the alignment tab on the bucking. Bear with me here. Any new questions? What's the yellow thing? Oh, this? This is um, the Tridos Tridos um, uh, template for when you drill the TDC hole. And then this is my ghost energy drink. Still haven't spilled it yet. All right, so does anyone think I'm forgetting anything? Tesco webcam. I don't know what that means. Uh, I mean, if you mean my webcam's crappy, it is. It's on. Um, I was gonna try and use my my GoPro to live stream, but uh, when I first got my laptop, I didn't even know how to make a file folder, so I'm not really computer savvy. And I actually learned that I could use my webcam to live stream, and I was like, I'm just gonna do that because there were all these extra like modules and crap you had to hook up for the GoPro, and uh, there's no way I'm gonna figure any of that out. So I'm actually surprised that we are here right now and operating because I am not the greatest on a computer. Okay, so I have the black sleeve, got the holes lined up. You'll know if they're not because you won't be able to put the set screws in. I think I have everything as of now. I'll find out if I forgot anything. Um, this is pretty self-explanatory. The bucking has, let's see, let's closer on camera, there's like a alignment groove and then there's a tab on the bucking. A lot of the chambers nowadays, it's really easy. Oh, of course, this one's not going to go. Oh, this one's smoother on one of the other ones, but it's usually pretty easy on the newer generation chambers. This might be an older one. Um, oh, there we go. Okay, it went in now. But usually it's easy to just slide everything in place. If you have to force it, there's something wrong. But again, since the bucking is clear you can look in the hop window and i always try and make sure with the 2021 autobots that the contact patch looks like it's centered in the hop window because any little shift of something could make your bb's curve and i've put together dozens of esrs and i'd be lying if i said they all shot perfectly straight but i try and make sure everything's you know good to the naked eye now, one thing about uh victor's airsoft replica here is i he doesn't have a tdc so you might want to get those down the road. So, oh, actually, before we get into that, let me put the set screws in. But uh, these set screws, there's two longer grub screws that go in. Oh, God. Oh, thank God I found that. This carpet is really plush. It'd be real easy to lose one of these set screws. But there are two longer set screws, and they go in each side of the chamber. And then there's one shorter one that goes in the bottom, and that holds everything in place. The one is shorter because it also shares the same threaded hole with the one mag block screw. Does anyone have anything new? Uh, corrections, comments, concerns while I put these in? With my stock TM and max hop units, I can get the barrel in with Teflon, so I guess it's tight enough. Yeah, yeah. I, I try and Teflon any, any airsoft replica that I put together, like the hop thing, I always try and put Teflon on just because it... I've had, uh, like back when I first got into the VSR-10 and Airsoft, the stock Tokyo Remuri chamber, I learned about like putting a Teflon seal uh, on the bucking and I noticed like a 30 uh, feet per second gain. Now, if you, ha if you do that and you get the gain, you should also gain consistency because you had, you potentially had an air leak and the Teflon seal helps you not but even without the Teflon, you can have a consistent air leak. Like if you have an air leak and it's losing the same amount of air each time, it's still okay. But I like to have everything perfectly sealed. Um, one important thing with these screws, uh, when you tighten the side screws in, you want to tighten one so it's just touching the barrel. And then you want to go over to the other side so it just touches the barrel. You want to tighten them evenly. I learned that reading it somewhere, probably Airsoft Sniper Forum. And if you crank one down it could actually like put pressure on the barrel and shift it and that could cause a curve there's so many things that can cause a curve so i always go back and forth uh i switch to uh, a different bit here the one small torx actually grips the, the these grub screws a little better but they're i think a what is it can't see 
Oh, a one and a half millimeter Allen is what they are. So you got to be careful because if you go too tight, you'll either round off your tool or you round, round out the screw. And then your only option really, if you can't get the screw out, is to drill it out and step it up. No big deal, but it can be a real pain. So I'm just going to put a little bit of leverage with this tool on here to tighten these down. Again, you don't, you don't want to go too tight, but you want to go back and forth until they're both snug. And then before I lose this screw, I'm going to put in the bottom one. Hi, Penny. Come on up. Come on. So far, the dogs haven't barked at nothing. I'm surprised I didn't have to get up yet. Went for two walks today. They're probably tuckered out. And this, the center one, I just snug it up just a little bit because the uh, when you put the mag block screw in, it shouldn't back out at all. Do you use white Teflon or the yellow? I use white Teflon tape. I've actually never heard of yellow. Uh, I don't know what the characteristics of yellow Teflon are, if it's thicker, um, if you would comment with that. But um, I had another roll here. I don't know where it is. I have another roll of Teflon tape, and it's like thick. Like it's... I actually stopped using it because I would just try and put one piece on and I couldn't get anything together. That's like some industrial stuff. Um, so bucking is on. Everything looks centered. Filed the Masada arm a little bit to adjust fitment. Thanks, Masada, for saying these arms so we could hook Victor up. Got the sleeve on, the set screws in, everything snug, tightened it evenly. Um, since there's no T there, that, that's what I was going to say. Uh, Victor doesn't have a TDC mod for this now I, I made a diy video there's so many ways you can do a tdc but the tridos tritos is like the best one you can get for the money um you buy the pro you get the clicky clicky base which is you know firm clicks that hold position um you'd also swap out a different arm with that kit or use the masada tridos arm and um the the profile of the tdc is so low like you just can't beat but um I believe it's airsoft artistry on instagram he um if you've seen any of my videos and you think that i make cool stuff like i'm just some schmuck with like some cutting and grinding tools in my garage and i hack stuff up but airsoft artistry is some he's they, they're really good with uh they have like cnc machines and mills and check out his instagram i'll, I'll have to add that to the description but he he's making airsoft artistry is making a new vsr 10 chamber and usually whenever I see one, I'm like, another one. But this one, it's going to have all the features. And the only thing that I don't like about the, the Tridos or any of the other ones is that, granted, the 3M tape should never come off the outer barrel. Um, it's still glue or tape. But this Airsoft Artistry model, he is making it so it's a, a CNC base, I believe. And it bolts through the outer barrel to the chamber. Like, all the holes are there. It's threaded. And I just think like you don't need all this heavy duty stuff for an, for an airsoft replica, but it's like, it's nice. So uh, definitely check that out because he's in like the prototype stage and I think he's trying to release some of them soon. Uh-oh, uh something popped up on my computer here. Oh, never mind, it went away. Uh, oh, I think I keep hitting the mouse, that's why. I think I missed some comments here. White is for water, yellow is for gas lines. Ah, okay, thank you. I did not know that. Yeah, I guess yellow is thicker. Yeah, blue and white. How did the test shooting go at your friend's house? Are all your guns ready? Yeah, so I, I, I went to my friend Ben. Thank you, Ben. We went up to his cabin this weekend and test shot um, tomorrow or uh, let's say Monday. Tomorrow or Wednesday, I might do another live stream if anyone's interested. Um, I have uh, my spring VSR that has Airsoft Replica that has a folding suppressor for airsoft and a folding stock for airsoft. Um, I thought about going over that gun, but yeah, Malcolm, that gun did shoot really well. Um, I was actually impressed because it has the airsoft philosopher hop-up chamber. Um, if Silicone Sword would like to touch on his feelings on that, it's uh, the theory of that chamber is really nice, but it was, uh, I think the website's gone now anyway. But anyway, back to this. Um, the last piece of this chamber that I could have had in a long time ago, if I would stop blabbering on, is the stock adjuster now i think after victor gets his rifle back he might look into a tdc mod 
because with this adjuster, anytime you want to adjust the, now it is a factory TDC. TDC, I think is top dead center. That's what it is in the automotive world. And the pressure of the hop arm is from the center, but a TDC mod is something that externally adjusts it. So the, the chamber does have a TDC hop, just not the adjustment. And what is a pain when you have this little adjuster block, I just put that in and use the adjuster screw to start it. You turn it in to pull the arm down for more hop and you turn it out to back it off. But when you need to adjust your hop with the stock setting like this, you have to rack the bolt back, take the mag out, get your Allen key, put it in the mag well, adjust it, put your mag back in, rack the bolt forward, you know, take a test shot and it, it's pain. Like some people, there are some people on the forums that they say, set it and forget it. And you, you may be able to just set your hop up and it's good to go. But I, I tweak mine too much that I need a TDC mod. So few things, a uh, few tips that I'm going to try and touch on that I learned from reading and talking to friends. Before we get the barrel group finalized here, um, there's a, uh, a few things that you can do for, what's the word I'm looking for, to make it more stable. Now, you should never run no barrel spacer because your gun will shoot like trash, even if you got the best parts and best like hop up stuff in it. But this with no barrel spacer, I can put my finger on the barrel and it just like the inner barrel just clacks around on the inside. So this is another thing I thought about doing prior, but I figure I would just do it if anyone's still hanging around to show them. You should use a barrel spacer. Now, these are barrel spacers, a few of them. This one is Action Army. Um, this one is a stock Toki Marui. Now, I think you really only need one. You can put on two, like one here and one here. But Victor, his, his VSR, has a tapered barrel. So um, he got G-Spec spacers, which you could use the rear. But the problem is you have to have it at the right place or you'll try and put everything together and like the spacer can come loose if you don't tape it. If you tape it at the wrong spot, they won't go in all the way. And the stock Maruri one um, is in the way for me to like, uh, well, it wasn't really in the way. Oh yeah, it was because I, I actually took the threaded tip off this and I like uh, actually thread it the wrong way first and burned my hand. But that's another story. Anyway, um, forget those spacers I showed you. I'm going to show you how to make one out of painter's tape. This is all you really need. You don't need to buy fancy spacers, um, Delrin, um, PDI, Edgy make them. I think they, I guess maybe for a spring rifle with a heavy piston, the upgraded spacers are better because you can have more like slight recoil and it might be able to absorb it. But when you have a tightly wrapped um, painter's tape barrel spacer, like I don't really think anything's going to be unstable about that. But anyway, since it's a taper barrel, I'm going to make a barrel spacer. So when the barrel is in place, the spacer is snug at the right part. So this is going to take me a little bit to get this once Big Dum Dum finds the start of the tape here. If anyone's got any comments or questions, speak now or forever hold your peace because I got to get this tape started here. TDC changed my life. Scope tour is amazing. Yeah, T TDC all day. Um. So I want to try and put the spacer probably like three quarters of the way near the end. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this painter's tape around here until I have a decently like size spacer that I think is going to be snug against the inside of the barrel. And then I'm going to install the barrel back in and make sure that the mag block holes for the chamber line up and everything is in place. Any new questions now? How's everyone's weekend? What'd you do? Is anyone going to any big events coming up? I'm going to the, I think it's called Operation Big House 2 or Syndicate 2 or something. It's at an abandoned prison in, the prison is either called Crescent or it's in Crescent, Pennsylvania. I forget exactly. Uh, yeah, Jacob, I wish. Hey, man, you could, uh, you can crash with us. We got the room if uh, you want to come to that event. My phone's blowing up here somewhere. I hear it, but I don't know where it's at. Here it is.
So what does everyone think about, like, do you think that Action Army hop-up chambers and edgy barrels are, like, you know, king of parts? Or is there another type of setup that you swear by? Or do you think that it really doesn't matter as long as you meet some, you know, or follow some cer certain guidelines like stable barrel, clean surface? Nice cabs. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks. All right, so I'm going to test this here because, or let me put a little more tape in. Actually, pretty happy with the level of trollage going on for my first live stream. I thought I'd be like an easy target to troll the smithereens. Try and get some of this crap I'm done with out of the way here. So I'm going to test this and make sure I didn't make the barrel spacer too big. So it went in place. There's still a little bit of play though, so I need to add a little bit of tape. I kind of want it to slide into place and just stop, so I have to put a little pressure on it in order to line up the mag block holes in the hop-up chamber. Hey Kyle, how was work today? How was everyone's work today? Do you all work? Anyone working from home? I'm trying to think of other random stuff I can talk about while I get this in place here. All right. So now when I, the, the painter's tape is at a, a good diameter that the barrel does not move like it's, and this is pretty snug in place here. So I think that the spacer, I'll put on a little piece just to be safe, to take up a little, to tighten the tolerance a little bit but we are good to go. So I don't know if you can see, since this is a tapered barrel, the diameter difference in like, this is a G-spec and a G-spec is a bull barrel. So the uh, inner diameter is the same all the way through versus a tapered barrel is smaller near the end. Another thing that this is like really splitting hairs here to improve, um, stabilization and maybe your potentially your ac accuracy and consistency is this i'm putting this in backwards to show you the play when you put the the chamber in the outer barrel most chambers the way they're machined they're not going to machine them to be a press fit because you want to be able to take your airsoft replica apart so when you put the chamber in you can actually like like i don't know if you'll be able to pick up the movement like i can wiggle it so one thing that i've done if you talk to my man silicone sword at precision pursuits he can machine your Action Army hop-up chamber or whatever chamber, and he puts grooves in it for O-rings. And then when you put the chamber in the barrel, there that play that I just showed you is gone. Um, not everyone is going to ship, and I don't even know what he charges for. It's not outrageous, but he, he did one of my chambers. I have a picture on my Instagram. And it's just one of those like little things where I try and do all the little upgrades, and hopefully at the end of the day it makes a difference, or maybe it will do nothing. But... If you don't want to send your chamber out for the O-ring mod, um, you can use some, I like to use the Scotch Gloss Finish Transparent Tape is the good stuff. That's what I use. But what you do is you can put this tape, um, I try and take a piece that's as long as the diameter of the hop-up chamber. I'm going to try and do this here without making it look sloppy. But you put this really thin tape on here and it will take up that little bit of slop. That sounds like everyone had a great day at work. Oh, yeah. Yep, I am off all week to watch the dogs at my mom's and do airsoft stuff like this is my week. So anyway... Um, on some of my chambers, I have put tape on, uh, what is it? Gloss finish, transparent tape, scotch tape. I put it on the front and back of the chamber. You really only need to do it on the front. Uh, I'm not going to do it on the back because if you put too many layers on both sides and it ends up being too tight, it will just like shred the tape while you put in. But I put one layer on, so I'm going to see if it tightened it up at all. So it is definitely a little tighter, but 
we can still put a little more tape on. Again, this is like a minor stabilization mod. And if you if you take the time to cut the pieces perfectly, you can have the ends of the tape meet. Um, you can do a formula. I think it's diameter times pi. And if, uh, just correct me if I'm wrong, but if you do diameter times pi, you can cut a piece of tape that length. And when you wrap it around, the ends will meet and it won't overlap. And then you can, I'm real OCD. So sometimes I'll sit there and I'll cut a perfect piece of scotch tape for my toy gun hop-up chamber. Anyway. Okay, so now that's too tight. I should I should just let it go. Why didn't you guys tell me to leave it go? Now I'm gonna have to start all over because I didn't do my my math correctly here. It's another thing I should have done and just talked about, but no, I had to try and demonstrate it. I'm just trying to hook up Victor and make sure he has a nice, stable, accurate shooting. Airsoft replica. Okay, let me let me try again. I'm just gonna do one piece. It snugs it up a little bit, and we're gonna ship it. Does anyone have any questions? Questions, comments, concerns, corrections. Did everyone leave? Okay. I'm just going to put a little, little, little tiny piece on, little tiny piece on. Since no one's saying anything, I'm just going to push to the limit. Perfect. Okay. So I put a piece of scotch tape on the front of the chamber, and that eliminates some slop. You got the barrel spacer. That is a must that will eliminate play. I think everything is ready to put this barrel group in, but like I said, if not, we will find out later. Um, you could put a little bit of tech T on the tape. See, it's a pretty snug fit, but I think that's what you want. So I could push it by hand, but I can't reach my finger anymore. So I'm going to use some pliers here. Oh. Push it a little too far. So now I like to try and line again. I don't know if you can see this on my camera, the back of the hop up chamber, make it flush with the barrel window. Uh, my webcam is actually pretty crappy. All right. So I try and make that flush. Uh, I've seen it uh, potentially fix mag issues, whether it be engagement or feeding. It's just something that I always do. Um, one thing that I actually did get ready, um, on depending on your parts and the tolerances and brands, when you put your mag block in, it sits like this, and you tighten the screws, depending on the airsoft replica you're messing with, the VSR, you could have the screws tighten and you could take the mag block and wiggle like the outer barrel is like clamped in between, but just the tolerances allow you to move the hop up chamber. And that's, you know, movement that we don't want. So this is one of those things not required, but potentially could, you know, improve your accuracy and consistency and stabilization. I take a piece of felt and it's a small square and I cut a little notch out of it like this. And you put it around the front mag block screw hole and the notch is so the screw hole is not blocked and what this does is it tightens everything up so there is no play when the mag block screws are tightened there shouldn't be you know originally but sometimes there is and this this um i would limit one piece of felt i have seen it this also help mag engagement issues but if you put more than one piece on i've seen it um give mag engagement and feeding issues what would be the main things to look at for inconsistent accuracy? <sighs> I mean, I would start with making sure that you have a good air seal um, because it's pretty easy to check with, uh, with a spring airsoft replica VSR. You can plug the barrel with your fingertip and rack it and pull the trigger, and you should be able to hold your finger on, like, I don't know, just for a few seconds. But if you have a perfect air seal, you can hold it for an hour. But... When you plug it and then rack it and shoot it and hold it for a few seconds and let go, all of the air should have stayed in there and it should release. Um, I said before that you could have a consistent air leak, but I would make sure that you have the um, everything is clean. Make sure you have a stable barrel. And past that, I would start looking into what bucking do you have? I've read numerous times that the Maple Leaf Omega Nub has tons of... Um, 
what's the technical term? Uh, I, I can't come to me, but the, uh, the maple leaf Omega nub, they have like bad eggs when they, someone, uh, silicone sword. What, what's, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, for maple leaf Omega nubs when they're produced anyway, um, clean barrel, stable barrel, good bucking. Everything has to work together. You can buy like a really nice bucking and a really nice barrel, but if the bucking isn't really designed for like the window cut variances. Yeah. Yeah. Like the variances of the Omega nub, uh, they vary when they're produced in the factory and they're just, I've had them where you could almost see that it looked wonky, the maple leaf Omega nub. So I, I'll put a maple leaf Omega nub in like an action army drop-in bill. But if anything shoots off with it, that's the first thing that goes process deviation. Yeah. There's, oh, I can't believe I can't think of it. It's like, uh, when, when anyone buys a part, that's like, it's not something that everyone, someone handcrafts each time, each one, they like just make it by machine and kind of just stop looking at it. That's uh, but yeah, all those terms are correct. Um, but maple leaf Omega nubs, uh, if you run one of those and you're trying to diagnose what's wrong, what flavor ghost you got there? Oh, well, Kyle, I'll tell you, this is the tropical mango. I have a sour watermelon and I drank a cherry yesterday and I have another one. I, I did try and get the Swedish fish, but every time I go in to vitamin shop, they tell me that they never send them the Swedish fish or the orange creamsicle. But um, yeah, this is the mango. Anyway, got sidetracked again because I couldn't think of a word. Um, Going to put in the mag block here. I got my piece of felt to stiffen things up. Chug, 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 chug. Yep. I have off every day this week except for Friday. I lied. I don't have off all week. I just have off Monday through Thursday. I'm going to go to work on Friday, and I'm going to be like, oh, man, Mondays suck. I'm going to be so thrown off. I should have just taken a day, but... This part's pretty easy. Mag block only goes one way. Got your felt on, got the screws in. Got everything tight. Okay, um, let's see. I can't wait till I get to the point where I forgot something. And I hope that it's not super important where the whole airsoft replica has to come back apart. But uh, let's get some more stuff out of the way that I don't need. Don't need that, don't need that, don't need that done with this tape done with all this packaging okay so next thing uh victor did want a cylinder guide sleeve and anytime i build a vsr 10 for someone i always make them a cylinder guide sleeve i have two diy versions that i made excuse me um the polycarbonate one which i get these tubes that are made for transporting uh fluorescent light bulbs that's relevant anyway I could post a link later, but two layers of this polycarbonate material works best when you have an HPA VSR 10. And the reason being is the bolt pull is so effortless and the return spring is so weak to bring it back on its own. The other guide sleeve that I make with um, carbon fiber and polypropylene tends to be too tight. So that works better for a spring bolt action because you're actually putting in a little more effort to return the bolt. So for Victor, I have, I made one of my, this is just, it's really two pieces of polycarbonate. I super glue them together so they don't slide apart. And you put uh, tech tea on some stuff, which I have right here. Tech tea is like that hot sauce. You can put this shit on just about anything. You do need to read into, some people don't like it for certain things, but a little bit goes a long way. And I'm just putting a little bit on the outside of the cylinder. And again, this is a Teflon cylinder, which has like a coating, which I think to begin with is already better for smoother operation. There's a little bit. And then it doesn't matter. You can put the cylinder guide sleeve over the cylinder or you can put it in the barrel. I'm just going to put it in the barrel because I actually made the notch pretty wide on this. Uh, look at the camera trying to see which way hold. Anyway, you get the point. But the notch is, um, there's a, I think, I think that this hole, does anyone know what this hole is actually for here? It's behind, can't even see with my crappy camera. It's behind the um, end of the hop window. I call it an unjamming hole. I'm pretty sure if you get BBs back into the barrel, like if you have a misfeed, I think that hole is to unjam them, but I'm not 100% sure. 
Oh, uh, Silk Cone Sword. Cle yeah, yep. Yeah, okay, clearing DBs. Oh, wait. You can get ghosts at Sheets? Huh. Yeah, I've been traveling all over the world to buy them and shop in GNC. News to me. Um, then I'm just going to put a little more tech tea on the inside of the guide sleeve. Again, if you have um, the E bolt, uh, the electronic Wolverine bolt, and you put a return spring in it, like it doesn't take it doesn't take much. You, I honestly put these things together dry and had no issues, but it's always nice to like loop stuff up just a little bit. So now, um, oh yeah, I wanted to put this in the barrel. Now we can put the make sure that the unjamming hole. It's not blocked by the guide sleeve, and we're going to thread the outer barrel in place. Hopefully, we didn't forget anything. I did. Uh, I didn't touch on the BB stoppers in the Action Army hop-up chamber. When I got this gun from this airsoft replica from Victor, he uh, the BB stoppers were like shredded. I think someone he got the gun on on uh, the airsoft replica on hop-up, which is um, it's a it's a pretty good app. I made a video on it. Um, you know, props to them for making like a marketplace, but uh, it's it's not the app, it's the people. But anyway, somebody like messed up the BB stopper, so they were real shredded and you can get them for five bucks. So I put the BB stoppers in the chamber and they, I think, make sure they're supposed to make sure BBs don't come back. But they also really aid in the um, nozzle alignment when it enters into the chamber. Correct me if I'm wrong on any of that. That's what I think the BB stoppers are for in the Action Army hop-up chamber. But they were destroyed, so I put new ones in. And you do have to be careful when you put new ones in or you're adjusting them that you don't make them too tight because it, they might wear faster or prevent the nozzle from going into the chamber smoothly. But you have a have some light tension on those. And um, what was I going to say about that? Oh, if you do the, the scotch tape mod, you can actually put tape on that side of the chamber and it will kind of stick to the... Uh, BB stopper screw and it holds it in place from rotating because I'm a firm believer that things like that can come loose because like the airsoft rifle operating they could kind of like back out and then that's how they get messed up but I've seen it happen any other questions comments or concerns I think we're for how much I've got sidetracked I think we're at a pretty good point here I even look at my notebook I probably forgot some important stuff um I don't always run this set screw. What you do is, I forgot to mention that, when you're rotating this barrel in place, you usually rotate it to a spot and the mag block is not where it's supposed to be. You have to usually turn it back and then there's this a hole in the outer barrel and a threaded hole in the receiver. And that's where this set screw goes. Um, I, I don't think the screw is required. It's good peace of mind. I'm going to put it in because it's it, it's not something that holds the gun together because once you bolt the replica, the VSR into the body, the threaded holes hold, like if you have this bolted and this bolted to the same thing, it's, it's going to hold it in place. One interesting thing though, I'm going to try to remember to touch on later. Silicon Sword actually sent me this video of, I think his name is WYZ on the Airsoft Sniper Forum. He, um, cut the bottom of the mag release out on the stock and there's something about having a free float barrel that makes it so you can align things better or better stabilization but anyway there i just go rambling on about something useless right now but when you tie when you put the screw in place you, sh you should be able to rock this back and forth and the screw you want to make sure you put the right one in because you should be able to this is the return by the way you should be able to smoothly operate the bolt so right now everything seems to be how it should be like nice smooth return i can't like take the cylinder and there it's not like crazy wobble like factory let me check my notes here if anyone has any questions make sure i didn't if anyone uh joined late this is my kitten notebook that i wrote my notes in i should check this first to make sure i didn't forget anything Got the barrel spacer, got the felt piece. Um, yeah, so we're on to the stock. And before this starts looking like a firearm, it is an airsoft replica. There are so many stock options nowadays for VSR-10s because there are so many companies. 
And if you don't know, um, Taryn Carving sends me stocks in the U.S. Uh, he's technically my only like sponsor. Um, he sends me stocks and I distribute them for him. I do have one here. I think it's a really cool stock. This is actually for an Aries striker. It's made of laminated wood. Um, if you think you may want one, hit me up. I'm working on getting another batch because the VSR 10 ones usually sell out really fast. But anyway, um, off the top of my head, if anyone, if anyone knows, uh, mention in the chat brands of VSR 10 stocks. You have your basic Tokyo Marui. The G specs come in black, OD green, FDE. You have the bar 10. Uh, you have the Action Army T10. Um, there's this company called Slong, S L O N G. They make a couple stocks now. They, I don't know if they have their own website, but there's Shooter CB gear that sells their stuff. There is the Maple Leaf stock. The Tokyo Marui VSR1 is now on pre order. I've been waiting forever. I just pre ordered it. I can't wait. How long does it take generally take you to build a custom gun from start to finish? Um, I would say if I'm planning it out with someone and we sit down and start to order parts, it would take like two to three weeks by the time we pick everything out, order the stuff, get it and put it together. If I had all of the parts in front of me and I was at my garage where I have my drill press, I, I could I could have everything full complete in a day, like less than a day, probably like if you include me assembling it and testing it, I could probably have it done in like five to six hours because I like to also shoot it and make sure it's everything operates. So that's the next part of this, which I won't be able to do on live stream. But when I get everything together, I'm going to have to take it and shoot it and make sure everything shoots good for Victor. Anyway, um, one thing before I drop this into the stock, another thing I should have done first, but I wanted to show you the... You have to route the harness and the airline. Um, the best place on this stock is into the butt of the stock, and it can be a bit tedious. Um, I will show you a couple spots on the stock that I dremeled, if you can see. So where the trigger, oh, you're not even going to be able to see that, but where the trigger guard goes, um, there's really only room for the trigger guard to, oh, that's what I forgot. Thank you. The trigger guard will fit into this slot and there's really only enough room to fit to the back of the trigger guard. So I actually take my Dremel bit or a drill and I drill it like up closer to the top because that allows you to have more room for the connector and the airline. Um, the other spot that I was talking about, which you may be able to see on camera, actually I might have a light that might help. <sighs> I don't know if you can see, but that half moon looking thing, it looks like a C that is usually a full hole, uh, a full cylinder. And the, especially with the special push lock air fitting that will hit right there. So I, I Dremel that to clear that that's one of the tedious things is test fitting everything into the stock and making sure it all clears. But you'll know if you're putting your airsoft replica together, what is going to clear or not. And you kind of just like take it apart dremel it a little bit put it back together um trigger guard that's what i need to do so um most bsrs come with a plastic trigger guard victor had a metal one i think it's a great upgrade i always worry about falling because we're running around in the woods with toy guns most of the time and if you fall and you have a plastic trigger this is like a one-off thing but if you fall you could like bust the trigger guard and like bust up into the trigger box and if it's a hard enough fall, you could break the metal one too, but I just like upgrading everything usually. So a metal trigger guard is not a bad idea. There is a, this is a bedding pillar. That's the term I always refer to it as. It goes between the trigger guard and the tail of the receiver. Now, uh, this is my opinion, um, especially for HPA. They make upgraded bedding pillars and they are the biggest waste of money. I've seen them advertise like, Oh yeah, imp improve the stabilization of your rifle and you know makes everything more sturdy. That's a bit hypocritical of me to say that because I like to upgrade every little piece. But you can put a CNC, I've made them out of carbon fiber. You're not gonna put this piece in your rifle and go see like you used to shoot five out of ten shots at 200 feet and now you're hitting 10 out of 10 or whatever it may be. This this piece is just to link and take up the gap between the trigger guard and the receiver. Correct me if I'm wrong. T oh yeah, here's some stocks. 
for VSR 10, T10, T11. Uh, I don't even know why I'm reading it to you because you can see in the chat, but I will keep going. A1, A2, A3, uh, ACC or ASCW, Tech 338. Oh yeah, I forgot about that stock. The Akura, that yeah, that's a that's a really cool one. I saw one floating around on Hop Up. I'm just gonna see if there's any one that. Oh, the uh, the SR40. That is one of my favorite. VSR 10 compatible stocks. The base rifle is cheap. The stock looks kind of like an M40 and it's really light. Anyway, so now what I'm going to do is another thing I did was route the airline previously. For Victor, I just drilled out the rear sling point hole. You can drill a separate hole. It was just already there. Um, and I have the line routed through and just have the fitting here. I like to run grip lines or a solid fitting, but that's like a little more work. If he ends up changing his mind, I could maybe uh, go pick up the fittings for him. But with the factory bolt kit, that's what you get. Um, get some more stuff out of the way. Oh, another thing that I almost forgot. Hi, Woodruff. Come on. Uh, the mag release. I have had the best experience with Tokyo Marui, as in the Tokyo Marui stock with a Tokyo Marui mag release. I have never, ever had like mag engagement or fitment issues. Once you start getting to some of the other ones, uh, mag fitment issues can be a nightmare. Trying to get uh, just, uh, it's a VSR thing. It's a pain. I try not to launch this across the room because that will probably be when we end the stream if I lose this mag release. Okay, fun fact, actually, I don't think Victor had the mag release spring, and I was able to use the spring from the Action Army stock hop arm. SR40 for the win. Oh, yeah. Okay, so now once you put your mag release in, I can't really show a good picture of it, but I kind of do like a downward install. I'm going to... I'm gonna try and like try and do this in front of the camera, even though I can't see all the details. Um, you want to start routing the. First of all, I have the harness wrapped around the trigger guard like this because I noticed that this harness from Wolverine seemed a little shorter than normal. You have to route it a certain way for it to just reach the end of the stock. But I'm gonna route the harness back into the stock while I still have my airline here. Can you see that? So now um, I'm going to hook up into my QD fitting, which I hope everything is tight. And now is the tricky part. Usually with a standard trigger guard, you have to put the rifle down in like this for the trigger guard to sit into place. But you need to make sure that you have the airline and harness kind of on the side of the trigger box so it doesn't get pinched between the trigger guard and the stock on the bottom portion. I'm just going to hold this differently so I can actually put this together. One mod I was going to show you was you can take a small zip tie and make, actually, I'm just going to do it because that will be here all night. We already are. So you can take a small zip tie and on the side of the trigger box here, I like to bend the zip tie. There's two holes and you can kind of bend the zip tie so it's a hook and it's essentially just like a harness tie and it holds the uh, airline and harness in place so you don't have to fight it as much which I'm just going to fight just getting the zip tie in here see if there's any new questions uh, Malcolm's heading out thank you thanks for joining Malcolm uh, don't forget to check out Vro Vroom Productions on YouTube he is my airsoft sniper YouTuber friend that I've teamed up with from Indiana Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Checking from SoCal. What's up? Trying to get the zip tie in place here. If I can't get this in like a minute, I'm just going to give up on the zip tie portion. Where's my screwdriver at? Does anyone prefer 
Um, after using both, prefer Spring over HPA. At the end of the day, I actually think I do like HPA better. Now, I think Spring is more practical. Don't get me wrong. Um, there's no airline. There's no batteries. Um, one thing I forgot to mention at the beginning, I've seen people say that you can build an HPA sniper rifle, HPA airsoft replica sniper rifle, and the HPA will make it more consistent. I don't really think that's true at all. You can have a spring airsoft sniper rifle and have the same consistency. It's all about all the little things going together and working together and going HPA does not, does not just give you better consistency based off of that. Um, but I think at the end of the day, I like HPA better because it's easier to make silent. It has a nicer bolt pull. Um, I really like the extra modifications you can do. I forgot to mention with, uh, okay, I'm done with the zip tie. I'm just going to go in the hard way. Um, I like the, with the e-bolt, you can do all different types of trigger blades. And I love putting um, like speed triggers in my VSR 10s. I just like the way they look. I actually was able to get a Timney uh, competition trigger shoe that I'm going to try and fit into a VSR trigger box. Okay. I think I got it. All that. And I got it without the zip tie. I have the, I can be able to see, I still have the trigger guard. You can't see really anything, but I promise you it's in place and we'll find out soon. So make sure I always look on the bottom and make sure that the harness is not pinched. Take off the butt pad and you should be able to see the harness here. And I just give it a slight tug to pull out any slack. So it's not getting pinched. There we go. Just dropped it into place. Oh, did I lose the mag release? I did not. So one thing I do before I put the bolts in, I hold it tight with my hand and I push the mag release button, which it does seem to be working, which I don't know. I'll uh, test it better once it's pulled together. But you got to be careful. You don't just like push it. But I hold the rifle and test the mag release button to make sure nothing fell out of place before I put the screws in. I think that's all I have left so far. And I can touch on some other things that we can just chill if anyone still wants to stay in the chat. I guess I should do this up here. I'm putting in the two body screws. The rear screw is the longer one. You have to be real careful um, with tension. You can't go cranking down on them. And if you crank down on the rear one too hard, it, it may impact, can and will impact the bolt pull, especially when you have a smooth HPA uh, straight pull. Tighten the front one, snug it up, tighten the rear one. One thing that I also wanted to mention, I wonder how many times I've said one thing, but um, the bedding pillar, um, this was a little too long and right here where my finger is, the receiver was sticking up. And if you shave the bedding pillar down and make the trigger guard go closer to the receiver, it actually fixes that gap. So I was able to get that a lot nicer. Forgot the bolt handle, which is over there. I'll get to that. Now that the screws are in, I'm going to do the magazine test. Does it take the magazine and does it engage? Oh, wait, wait. John, if you heard that, did you hear it click? Does it release though? It doesn't fall out. Oh, takes a little bit of a push. I forget which mic was working. I forget if it was this mic or if it was this mic. Anyway, the mag does engage firmly. It doesn't exactly fall out, but this is one Action Army magazine I had laying around. It, you. Man, you, you could buy two Action Army magazines and they may fit different. But I can keep getting this out here. Mag out. Mag in. Mag out. Mag in. Okay, so that's good. That's actually pretty decent. I am surprised. Well, not really because it's a Tokyo Marui. Any new questions? Hey, does your carbon fiber sleeve work on an MB01 or L96? So it will work on pretty much any bolt action airsoft sniper rifle. <clears throat> excuse me, but uh, you may need to cut it to different specs. Like the one in my guide video I did specifically for VSR 10, but if you follow those basic guidelines and like the rotations of the barrel, it should work. Um, you may have to get different size tube. That's one thing I didn't think of because some clones, uh, I forget if an MB01 and L96 is the same 
Kyle, we can hear it, is the same um, diameter uh, cylinder. But in theory, it would work, but you're going to have to do some uh, some modifying and changing the size of the material. Uh, right now, I'm going to put on the bolt handle. This was missing the, there is a spring and detent pin to help like latch the handle. And it was missing. So I just made one out of a screw. I like cut the head off and rounded it and it seems to work. But Victor, if you have any problems with this, you can just, uh, I would just buy a new bolt handle kit or try and get a Boneyard VSR because that was the best I could do with the pin since it was missing. Um, I think this is Angel Customs uh, handle. It's actually a pretty nice handle. Uh, this is real easy. You just put the handle over the receiver and then you have your spring and detent in the end cap. This is an Airsoft replica, Airsoft. Put your screw in here. Hey, I'm back. Hey, what's up? Thanks for the info. Much love from Australia. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for joining in. What are the jewel limits like in Australia? I don't think I missed any questions. Spring, for, oh yeah, for uh, spring versus HPA. Spring, air is the real one. Yeah, no, I just I just love HPA, but HPA VSR, and it has to be the e bolt. I oh man, I'm just not a fan of the M. Not a fan of the M. It's uh, it gets you into the HPA world for cheaper, but I would just save up a little more. Oh, I'm just uh, tightening this bolt now. The handle stays up, and then the pin. Oh, a little tight to get the pin working. This is because I made the pin out of a bolt. There we go. But with a straight pull, see how it returns on its own? Kyle, can you hear that? Did you hear it? Anyway, this is a pretty smooth operation. Um, you know, you do like the felt mod. You make sure you don't crank the stock bolts down. You have everything pretty stable. Um, if you tighten, If you tighten this bolt, the rear one, that's how you can kind of tighten it. But... So far, the operation is pretty smooth. Now, let's see if it actually works and if we have any air leaks. Let me clean up some of this garbage. I have so much garbage here now. Yeah, daddy. Oh, no airsoft in Australia. I forgot about that. Gel blasters. I heard about those. I'm not too familiar with them. I uh, can't forget the battery. I have gotten to an airsoft game, get my HPA rifle all ready to go, get out to the field, go take a shot. And I didn't even, like, I don't even have the battery. It's like back in the safe zone. So people complain about the HPA battery, but if you're big, dumb, dumb like me and forget it, that's your fault. I, this battery is no excuse not to go HPA. Like everyone's like, oh, I want the mechanical engine. There's no battery. Like this does not, like it's a, it doesn't do anything. You plug it in and you forget it. I can understand if you have like an ARP9, and I, I shouldn't say it doesn't do anything. It does. It powers the gun. But it's not a reason to, you know, hate HPA or not want to go HPA because you have this battery. And people want the mechanical over the electronical because of this. One guy mentioned about um, worried about moisture and this and that and cold temps. Like I've played in zero degree weather and I've played in over 100 degree weather. And as long as you are not spiking your airsoft sniper into a pond, you'll be fine. And even then, it may still work, but don't try it. Um, so I got my battery hooked up, and you should be able to hear the engine, like, uh, uh, I don't even know what the word is, uh, cycle, or the little switch, the pneumatic engine. I can't think. Kyle, can you hear that? I don't know if you can hear that. Anyway, um, so it, it, it is working then, but do we have any air leaks? We will find out, because I have my air tank here. Woody. Penny, dog's about to bark at something. Um, I like carbon fiber tanks. They cost a lot more, but they're lighter. And instead of 3,000, they're 4,500, so you can fit more air. That's another thing. People don't like having a tank on their back. I made a YouTube short about people that hate HPA. I really don't think it's a big deal. Like, yes, you have an airline, but if you route it the right way, it's no big deal. I People hate HPA for the people that ruin it and cheat, and I get that, but because you don't want to spend the money or because of the airline or battery. I don't think that's a good excuse, but Hey, uh, teach in their own. I hate AG. So, you know, I have my own reasons too. Um, so I'm going to hook this up to the fitting here. 
I don't hear any leaks, which is good. Um, sometimes if you don't tighten the fitting enough. Kyle, did you hear any leaks? Oh, Orbeez. I didn't know that's what, that makes sense now. Orbeez is what gel blasts are. Okay, cool. Um, so, have the air hooked up. I don't hear a leak. Does it work? Oops, sorry, Penny. Or sorry. Sorry, Luna. So, it's kind of loud because I'm like in a room. But everything does work. And obviously, it's not semi-auto. This is an airsoft replica. You would rack it, shoot it, rack it, shoot it. So everything does work, which is good. I'm surprised we made it this far. There are still some people with me. Thank you for joining me. Um, are there any other questions, comments, or concerns? I don't really know how much more I can drag this out or what I can talk about since I got the rifle together. Kyle, here's everything. That's great. So yeah, I mean, if you watch from start to finish, that is how I put together an HPA airsoft sniper rifle vsr 10 if you haven't uh noticed by now i only mess with oh i think the word i was looking for for the action army omega nubs was quality control that i don't know if someone said it but that's what i meant bad quality control does the strip t start after this it might it might but um i don't know where i'm limited on that in terms of like getting the uh the live stream shut down or my channel banned you'll have to look into that trying to think of anything else if for some reason you don't um i think vsr 10s are very easy to build and learn learn on but if for some reason you don't want to and you would like me to build one like this like i did for victor you can send me a dm on instagram i will throw my instagram up in here again even though you can just scroll that is my instagram what's my only fans it's the same thing it's blind sniper um, if you want to look that up, yep, same thing. Um, yeah, I don't really have much more. I will give it a few more minutes for any last questions, but then I'll probably get off. I really only know how to look at, I think we got 11 people in here. Hell yeah, my goal was 10. Yeah, I mean, thanks, thanks for joining me. Um, thanks for hanging out. Watching me put this toy gun together. I'm glad nothing got shut down. Well, uh, yeah. How can you be a sniper if you are blind? Well, it's uh, it's not like blind like vision. It's blind like um, like window blinds, like blind like that. Bet you didn't think about that, did you, Kyle? Let's see, give the doggy a treat before we go. Are you napping the whole time, Penny? Here, you want a treat? Good girl. Oops, sorry. Here you go. I'm actually surprised they didn't bark at like everything. All right. Uh, yeah. So thanks for joining me. Um, feel free to subscribe. It doesn't really matter if you do or don't. I'd appreciate it, but I'll survive if you don't. Uh, the dogs are barking at something now, so I'm going to go. Thank you so much. See you next time. And at. Hey, stop barking. What are you barking?